Thank you for introducing me. Hello, everyone. I'm Anna Palmgren, and I work at the Swedish Public Employment Service, or PES, as you call it here. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about the digitalization in Sweden and also what we do in Arbetsförmedlingen and see what we can do in the future. If we start with Sweden, this is a beautiful picture from the west coast in Sweden. We have actually talked about the digitalization for a while. I think most countries have. But you can really see that things are happening now. For instance, the customer needs are huge. All the customers all over Sweden have needs and they want to have something back. They can't just decide that I go into an unemployment center and I stay there and I get my help. They want to use the digital first move. And so the government have to change the way they work with the digitalization. And we have to think differently because the people need that from us. And what we do then, of course, is that we look at what all the other governments do and the companies, of course, because they have also realized that this is the way to the future. They have started many years ago, but now they see that the results can probably make them a new market. Like we heard in there, uh, there are so many new job opportunities due to this new digital area. So I think if you think about the future now, there is no, nothing is going to go as slowly as it is now. It's going very fast, we think, but it's very slow if you think in the future. So, if we talk about the digitalization, you could also say that you can't just develop things because you think they're interesting or they fi you find them funny or... You have to see the need in the development that you do. What's in it for me? Like, for instance, me. I didn't really think the digitized era was mine until I one day realized that I have to climb the mountain. I have to go the hard way first in order to ski downhill later on. So have you all parked your car? I think you have. Maybe one or two of you have used a coin or maybe a card in this machine when you park your car. I did at least until last year when the machine wasn't working. And I was standing there in line and the, pour was, the rain was pouring down, didn't have an umbrella, felt really mad that the machine didn't work. And it said on, on the screen there that you could use this app instead. And it took a while to download the app. I had to connect my card to the app. But after a while I was done, maybe 10 minutes later or something, and I found it a bit you know, annoying that I had to wait for this. But the day after, I realized how good this was. Because I could sit in my car, I could use my app, I, could, I didn't even have to stand in line. And I saw all those people standing there in front of the parking machine, waiting for it to be used. And it, of course, it didn't work the day after either. And I could just sit there, and it took me maybe one minute at the most to do something that used to take 10 minutes. Maybe you recognize yourself in this, because sometimes it takes a little while to go over the hill, and then you can ski downhill. So Arbetsförmedlingen is working with this. We do these things. We try to make things easier for all our customers or job seekers. So what we do is, for instance, applications, like I told you, the parking app. We have three now, and we're working on a few more, actually. They're, use, they're used a lot. The uh, job seekers find them very easily used, and they find them um, useful as well. It's not just th something that people say, use the app. They find it themselves, which is also a good thing in the digitized era. Uh, we also have something called webinars. Webinars is like uh, live cast films. They are live. And you can chat with somebody at the same time. One employer office is, is sitting there and chatting with you at the same time. And you could also see them, if you haven't had the time exactly when it was live broadcasted, you can see it later on another day when you find it interesting to see it. We also have podcasts. And podcasts are something that you listen to when you have the time. I think most of you use podcasts quite a lot. Um, and maybe you don't even think about that you're using a podcast. And can you learn at the same time? It's the best thing. 
So uh, we try to have short and long parts of podcasts that you could, ha you could use if you're biking to your job or your education or wherever you go, you can listen to it. And we also have recruitment meetings online. Like for instance, if I want to employ somebody who uh, usually lives in the north of Sweden, I live in the south, it takes quite a long time for me to go there by train or car or bus or something. But if I use an online service that we have, it goes really, really quickly. And it's also safe. Uh, I know you all think about this, if you can use it safely these days, but this one is. And we have seen that lots of employers use it and find it very good. We also have Digitala Jag. It's a Swedish expression, but it's a cooperation we have with Google, actually. Uh, we found the same need in that the digitized era have to come from underneath. We can't decide that everybody has to do this. You have to find it again in your, in your own will that uh, I want to be more digitized, but I don't know how. So we created a website together with uh, Google called Digitala Jag, which helps you to hire up your digitalized uh, competence. For instance, if you have a mobile phone, you could identify yourself with that. You probably can in many countries, but not everybody knows how to use it. So we made a very simple way of knowing how to use it. So today, about 87, 88% of all our job seekers use this. We're very happy about that. And also we have something for our internal parts. All our um, employers at, at um, Arbetsförmedlingen need to have a very good competence in the digitized era. Uh, and what they do then is that they use our digital portalen, which is something that we have found for our own safety. Because of course, if all the job seekers run fast in this digitized way, we have to come along, we have to be in ahead and feel like we own it. Today, maybe not everybody feels the same way in Eibelsvermelingen, so we help, have to help them out. You might know some of these things. Um, I just want to tell you a little bit about the Swedish FAQs. Uh, we are today local employment uh, offices clustered into 11 market areas, and we also have 14,500 employees. 11,000 of them use, uh, uh, meet our customers or our job seekers every day. And 67% of us are women. Good that I'm standing here then, because we are mostly women. The average age is 47, so I'm much younger, of course. Uh, and many professions are represented, such as psychologists and physiotherapists. We have uh, decided that we want to offer our job seekers as many possibilities as possible. And we have 280 local offices today. When I was in Brussels 2015, we were 340 around there, that, so we have decreased a little bit. And what have we done? Well, we're going from local loyalty to digital first. We have realized that being large in a local office isn't really helping the customer as good as we want to. So we have to take the digital way first, which means we have to listen to what the customers are asking us about. And uh, we, ha we have to think about ourselves. Do I really think digitally first now that I'm working as an un unemployment officer? Or do I think about the normal way of doing it? which is usually that we sit down with the uh, job seeker and we talk to them. Those meetings have to be exclusive these days. Those meetings should be, of course, for the people who need them, but not to everybody. And this is a different way of thinking for us because we are used to working in a way we have all these years, but now we have to think differently. And that's what I'm working with. Because I work at a department called Digital Engagement. And we work with uh, trying to help people to change their culture, change their mindsets. Uh, instead of just thinking, oh, I'm, I'm going to tell everybody that this is a good thing. It might not happen like that. 
We have to give them the tools, the educations. We have to package all the news that fall down from the sky. That's at least what people say that it feels like. And we have to package it down so everybody can do whatever they feel like. When, when they have the time, they can actually use our educational skills. And I think uh, maybe this is the way to go, not just telling people what to do, instead helping them and inspiring them to do the mindsets change themselves. We also believe in uh, digital networks, such as digital coaches. Uh, these are employment offices that have decided that they're very interested in this way of thinking, and they want to help their fellow employees, uh, and they want to be the person who stands in the front, and I'm the early adapter. These people have a network today, and they help each other with tips and ideas that they can bring forward. And in that case, maybe they can actually influence the leaders. Because all us managers, we have to do the same thing. Sometimes we have to step forward and say, OK, we have to change our, our way of thinking. The mindset is not just for every people that I work with every, every day. It's also about me. I have to do the change, which is sometimes a bit difficult, I have to say. Um, so what we have in the future then, because of course you're thinking, OK, this sounds good. So what are you going to do in the future? Well, we're talking about three generations of matching between the job seeker and the employer. Uh, we used to be the person who held the hand of the job seeker and we walked to a company and said, this is a really good person, shouldn't you try to employ her or him? And uh, of course, if the company said no, it was a very hard job. You had to work very hard to get one person into a job. Not very efficient, we have to say, in retrospective. And now, today, what we do is that we have uh, like a database that match for us, but still we are manually using it. Like for instance, I go in and I have a look, how many people do we have in this database and what can we do? The database is doing something for us, but it's not doing all of it. So in the future, in the third generation, the computer is doing it for us, sort of like a dating site. We call it... Um, well, you can, you can say that we call it an ecosystem, that everything works together. For instance, if I'm looking for a job, I'm a job seeker, I just have to write my profile, profile down once, and it gives me all the opportunities to new jobs. Wouldn't that be so great? I think in the future, this is one, what's going to happen, and we are the matching point. So we're still very, very good in what we do, but we use our... Uh, personal time at the exclusive meetings for the people who really need the hand walking. So, I want to give you a few tips. Maybe you're already doing this, but increase your own digital maturity. Well, I'm telling you, I didn't have a LinkedIn account uh, in December last year. Sorry. Now I do, and I've seen what kind of possibilities it gives me was a bit of a hard mountain to climb again when I had to make this account. I had to write down all my things in my profile. I think you've all done it. It takes a while and it feels a bit, you know, tough. But once you're there, it's like, wow, it's a new opportunity. I can see so many things that I didn't see before. And I can also follow a few companies that I'm interested in and maybe see what all the, all the governments are doing in the digitalized era. Um, I think also to be an example, be digital and use the digital services yourself. It's easy to tell people to change something, but it's much easier if you're an example yourself. I'm not very digitized, but I have to try and I can do a few things. And if I can do a few things, I'm sure all of Sweden people can do that as well. And uh, I'm also thinking if I increase my maturity and I give a few tips, they are going to do the same, which means we're definitely not going to be as low as we are today. We're going to hide the competence, which is good. Also, participate in the digital 
conversation. For instance, if you have like an intranet or something, use it. Please like things and go into Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn or whatever and use it yourself and see what people are talking about. It, it, it gives you a large, um, what could you say, a stage to see what people are talking about today. And it also gives you help in your leadership. So you can think differently compared to what you thought before. And also, we have to help everybody prioritize. This is the future. We can walk around and talk about it, but if we don't really prioritize this first, I think we might have a problem in the future. Today, Sweden is number six when it comes to companies that are, or countries that are ahead in the digitized era. We would like to be first. That means that we have to hire up all the floor, and I think we're on the way, really. So, I'd like to thank you for listening, and if you want to email me, please do so. I don't have any business cards. I work in the digitized era, so please use it. Thank you for listening.